Now, it was the 2011 novel that brought Sexy back into the bookshop. Fifty Shades of Grey has sold over 125 million copies worldwide. But it's got some competition as new thriller Maestra has hit number one on the bestsellers list of Varda and it's creating mm. a worldwide buzz. Author Lisa Hilton joins us live from London via Skype. Lisa, this book is being compared to Fifty Shades of Grey, but it almost didn't happen. That's exactly right. Um, about two years ago, my ex-agent asked me to have a go at writing something erotic, which I did. I showed her what I'd done, and she pronounced it disgusting. So what? I put it back in the drawer and <laughs> carried on with my present project, which is a biography of Elizabeth I. When it was done, I took it out again and tried to shop it around, but I had a book that I literally could not give away. I was just about to despair and, and self-publish when um, a friend of mine who owns a restaurant, she has a um, quite famous publisher who comes in as a regular customer, and she put the manuscript on the poor man's plate and basically said, you won't get any dinner until you start reading. And the next day, uh, when my friend went to work, there was the publisher standing outside on the pavement waiting for her to open up, saying, I have to meet the person who, who wrote this book. So that's how it all began. Wow. Now, your, your day job is a historian, as you said, they're writing books on yeah. and your Tudor queens and this type of thing. Did you get inspiration from that part to, to write about uh, the heroine in this? Because I think it's very different to Fifty Shades, because in Fifty Shades, the woman involved in that is quite subservient, whereas your heroine, Judith, almost thinks like a man. Thank you so much for saying that. I'm so bored of the Fifty Shades comparison. Um, my book, Maestra, is, is really nothing like Fifty Shades. Yes, it's quite sexy, but it's also a thriller. Um, it's got lots of exotic locations, lashings of clothes, lashings of glamour. Um, it's a book that both men and women will like. And certainly, yes, it was inspired to some extent by the powerful women I've written about as historical subjects. And Lisa, I'm delighted you said that this is a book that men will like as well, because a lot of these kind of Fifty Shade type books are geared towards women and there's nothing for us men. Oh, absolutely. I can't be doing with all that soppy chiclet stuff. This is a proper story. It's got guns, it's got boats, it's got great clothes, it's got lots of drinks, it's got the mafia, it's got murder. It's a real man's book. Lovely. Your heroine, she works in, in an auction house in London, but she kind of moonlights as a hostess. So she's drawn to eroticism and sex. That's her penchant. It's not like something she needs to do. She doesn't need the cash, but she likes this kind of life. So it's the lure of, I suppose, what you shouldn't be up to. That's right. She's, she's a transgressive woman in, in many ways. And as the pl plot of Maestra proceeds, she becomes more and more transgressive um, and unpredictable. But yes, she's, she's drawn to to pleasure in all its forms, to sex, to food, um, to glamour, to money, to places. So she's, she's a woman with an appetite in every sense of the word. Lisa, this is a book that was inside in the drawer for a while. Now it's a book and now Hollywood. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. So about six weeks um, after the publisher um, first took the book, I found myself on a plane to Hollywood to meet Amy Pascal, formerly of Sony and now an independent producer who had bought the manuscript without even having a name on it. Um, and she's had Erin Cressida Wilson write the script, um, the woman who was responsible for the screenplay of Girl on the Train. Oh. And fingers crossed the movie will appear. I, I still keep expecting someone to say there's been a mistake. This is not my life, it's somebody else's life. You often hear though when you speak to authors like yourself that all of a sudden they're trying so hard for so long to get something over the line and then after that everything happens easily. I saw somewhere written about it that it's a kind of a, a mix between a fatal attraction and the talented Mr. Ripley. Would that be more in line of what you think it is? I think that's a very flattering comparison and I think certainly Judith is an amoral heroine, um, but you kind of want her to win, even though she's so very bad and so very extreme. I love her you really already. Want to for her. Lisa, at least if you're doing an audio book, you can do it yourself. Okay? Yeah, what a great you voice! You have a very sexy she? voice. She does, and she's it's, very sexy looking yes. as well. Keep the cold. Hmm. It's the cold. No. It's keep the cold going. That's what we say. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. The best great of luck. Pleasure. And Thank congratulations. You very much. Thank, you. Thank you. I'm going to read you a passage out of it, okay? <laughs> so this is it now. I started working with uh, Mr. Dario Shea. Oh, gee, oh, sorry, that's the RT guide. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I got mixed up between both of them. They're kind of the same. So 50, sh racy. 50, <laughs> 50 shades out the window. So this yeah. is the new one. Maestro. And I'm delighted yeah. what she says that about men because men never get to read these type of books. Yeah, well, they always said that you don't want to, but I don't know why men wouldn't be drawn to eroticism and boldness, really. It's sure. not just all women mm -hmm. are into that. It's my middle name. 